Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle. I'm here with my co-host Gary LaRude. In this episode, we're going to continue our coverage of the June issues with the Aerospace and Defense Supplement. The lead article is very good, written by authors from Plextech RFI and Corvo about the optimization of a GAN transistor for two bands in the 2.7 to 3.5 gigahertz range aimed at active phased array radar applications. And it's very good because it's a flexible design that can be optimized at different frequency ranges and achieves better than 55% efficiency, so a very good result. What else do we have for technical features? So we have two technical features, one from Pasternak that talks about the uh, trend in the aerospace and defense industry of moving from custom proprietary cable assemblies to those that are now based more on commercial off the shelf where you have a qualified manufacturing process. And of course, this is of interest because it reduces the cost as well as shortens the lead time. Then our second article is an interesting one based on the design of an RF power amplifier board and its placement in a CubeSat. This is submitted by the University of Colorado Boulder and it talks about their entry into what NASA calls their CubeQuest challenge, which Reminds me of the old days, not that I was there, but when cars were first uh, being adopted, they had all these endurance races. And so NASA's come up with this sort of endurance race with these CubeSats that people will enter and there are different prizes, money is involved to, uh, to see how far they can go out and transmit and that sort of thing. So this is an interesting article. It really gives some insight into the uh, design requirements for a CubeSat. Yeah, the whole commercialization of space is a very interesting thing to be following these days. So we had one product feature, and that was from Tektronix on an arbitrary waveform generator. It has a sampling rate of 50 gigasamples per second and has 10-bit resolution in the vertical range. So it's, it's a new entry into that area. What do we have for uh, tech briefs? So we have three tech briefs this month, one from uh, Comtech PST. It's an 8 kilowatt power amplifier for X-band based on uh, GAN devices, uses modular GAN approach. Then we have from M-Wave a series of circulators for phased array applications, and they have models that go basically from UHF up to X-band. And then our third one is from Miles Tech. It's a uh, MIL standard 1553B bus coupler. So three tech briefs this month. So turning to the news, uh, there's a lot of stuff coming out in 5G with Mobile World Congress Shanghai. Right. I think the biggest announcement was China Mobile announced that they'll be deploying 5G in 50 cities around the country mm. before the end of the year. And they've put together a $4.4 billion fund to support industry activity in that area. And I think it's estimated they'll probably deploy about 50,000 base stations, so some serious quantity there. And we also saw ZTE announce that they've inked 25 5G contracts. So China's really coming to life for the second half of the year in 5G. Uh, what did you see in the news? So a couple of things related to uh, 5G on the U.S. side. The FCC at their July 10th meeting is going to uh, review a proposal to allocate 114 megahertz of spectrum at 2.5 gigahertz for 5G. And they're basically, the proposal is to reapportion spectrum that had been devoted to something called the Educational Broadband Service, which seems to be underutilized, to make it available for a commercial auction that would take place, say, next year. And this would really be the first dedicated mid-band spectrum for 5G in the U.S., so I think it's an important move. The second item I saw, interesting news from Ericsson, they announced that they're going to build a totally automated factory for 5G base stations in the U.S. They said it will build uh, basically small cells, which I imagine will be used in urban settings, and also what they call advanced antenna systems. They didn't explicitly say, but I'm reading this as, as probably millimeter wave uh, phased arrays, and it's going to be a totally automated facility. And interestingly enough, they say the sort of the IT backbone of it will be their own 5G network. So they're going to demonstrate how 5G can be used in an industrial application. Yeah, it would be great to follow that. Yeah, I think uh, it's a good move on their part for two reasons. One, with uh, all this uh, kerfuffle over Huawei, and Huawei is certainly going to lose some business. Uh, Ericsson needs to step up capacity in order to take advantage of that. And of course, with all the political concern about national security in the U.S., I think it just makes sense for Ericsson to put a manufacturing facility in the U.S. They clearly have a lot of R&D based here. Now they'll have a manufacturing facility. So that was interesting news. So turning to events, in case people haven't heard, 
Microwave Journal and sister publication Signal Integrity Journal are taking the ED Icon event online. So this will be the first event of its kind, a fully online conference. Uh, we surveyed engineers and found okay. that they don't have the time or the budget to attend more physical events in our industry. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a really good solution. And it will be totally free to anybody to attend and it will take place September 10th through the 12th, but everything will be recorded, so it'll be available on demand at your leisure to watch whenever you want. That's nice. So we have a plan so far. Day one will be focused on 5G and IoT related topics. Day two, radar and antenna related topics. And finally on day three, we'll cover signal integrity and power integrity. So it should be something for everybody. And you can find out more at ediconline.com. That's a nice lineup. One other news item from us, we are launching a podcast, the Microwave Journal podcast. We actually got some feedback from one of our Frequency Matters viewers who said it was difficult to have the time in the office to watch the uh, episode. And he said, boy, if you did this as a podcast, I could listen to it on my drive to work. So that's what we've done. So the Frequency Matters uh, audio track will be available on this podcast. We'll also supplement it with some other uh, interviews from time to time. For example, at IMS, I did an interview with industry analyst Earl Lum, and that's available now. So you can find the podcast. Just look for Microwave Journal. It's available on Apple Podcast, on uh, Google Play, on probably Stitcher, Spotify, whatever people's podcast app is. So we're looking forward to, to that. Hope you'll find it useful and give us some ideas if there are other topics you'd like for us to cover. And I think that's a wrap. It is. So we want to thank you for watching this episode or listening if you listen to it on our podcast. And we want to thank our sponsor, Maycom, for making it possible. Maycom is your partner from RF to light. Until next time.